I'm Aaron Wiltshire, Head of Projects at ETOA, the European Tourism Association, the lead organisation delivering the partnerships in the European Tourism Programme on behalf of the European Commission, alongside the European Travel Commission and ECTA. This is the pre-departure webinar ahead of the Macau edition of Partnerships in European Tourism Programme. During this webinar, we'll provide an overview of the events taking place in Macau on the 23rd and 24th of October, which includes a conference on tailor-made travel and a matchmaking bringing together European businesses with operators from the Chinese market. This is against the backdrop of the Global Tourism Economy Forum, where the European Commission will have a stand. I hope that this webinar provides helpful information which will allow you to prepare for your time in Macau. The agenda of this webinar is as follows. Um, I'll start by going through the chronology of the events and highlighting any practical items to be aware of. There will then be an introductory video about the host exhibition in Macau, the Global Tourism Economy Forum. I'll then go through the tools available to you before and during the events in Macau, followed by a roundup from one of the participants at a past edition of the Partnerships in the European Tourism Programme. They'll provide first-hand advice on how to approach such events and how to make the most of your time there. I'll then provide a summary of uh, your colleagues who will be travelling to China for this event. Uh, one of the major aspects of this programme is not only selling your product directly to the target market, but also to encourage the development of commercial and thematic partnerships between uh, European businesses with the aim of capitalising between your similarities and providing market advantage. My colleague Elisa Lee will then present an update on the Chinese buyers who are attending the event in Macau. Uh, we hope this will help you focus on the right appointment selections based on the type and profile of the operators present. We'll then hear a testimony from a Chinese operator letting you know how to make the most of your time that you have with them. We'll then have a Q&A where you can pose any questions to myself or Elisa about the event in Macau uh, on practical matters or indeed advice on how to prepare for the event. Preparing for Macau. <clears throat> the appointment preference system is now open. I will talk about this more shortly, but please be aware that the system is, remains open until Wednesday the 10th of October. You'll then receive your provisional appointments um, by the 15th of October, allowing you to prepare for your meetings. Um, you'll receive your final appointments on the day of the event itself, hopefully with minimal or no changes uh, to the provisional ones that you'll have received. On practical matters, my colleague Karine will have been in touch and she can be of assistance if you have any questions over email. Uh, you are being hosted at the Sheraton Grand Hotel Macau. Uh, the programmes of events will take place at the MGM Kotai, um, including the matchmaking and um, conference. Uh, the nights of the 22nd and 23rd of October are covered. Um, you will have a need to have arrived in Macau by Monday the 22nd um, as the next morning registrations open at the MGM Kutai Vista Suite from 8.45 uh, with appointments kicking off at 9.30. We're offering 14 minute slots, we'll run all day. Um, but we have a long lunch break at 1 o'clock um, where we go to the EU hosted lunch. Appointments will finish just after 5pm. On the morning of Wednesday the 24th, we're back at the MGM Kotai Vista Suite where the conference will take place on, uh, take on tailor-made travel. Um, thereafter, you'll have access to the remainder of the GTF programme before the closing ceremony. If you have any questions about the running order or the practicalities, please submit them now or throughout the webinar. I will now show a quick introductory video about the Global Tourism Economy Forum, uh, which will provide details on the host event and a bit of context for you. Tourism is an essential pillar of the world's economy, showing a continuous and steady growth since 2009, promoting cultural diversity, breaking down barriers, and creating jobs. On the occasion of the EU China Tourism Year in 2018, the Global Tourism Economy Forum welcomes the European Union as its partner region. Known for its incredible variety of touristic offerings and millennial cultural heritage, the region welcomed 671 million travelers in 2017, an all-time record in international arrivals after eight years of consecutive growth and confirming its position as the world's leading touristic destination. The growth of the European tourism market is particularly fueled by Chinese outbound travelers, 
being the country's second most favorable global destination after the Asia-Pacific region. China became the world's largest tourism outbound market in 2014, with 135 million travelers a year and becoming the largest spenders in the world. The Global Tourism Economy Forum was created in 2012 in Macau to answer the world's needs for insights on Asia tourism trends and was the first tourism exchange platform to promote President Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Initiative. GTEF engages public and private stakeholders from around the world in high-level exchange on thought-provoking topics. The forum became a not-to-miss annual rendezvous for the promotion of tourism with a focus on China that presents investment opportunities and where multilateral partnership agreements are made. Since its very debut, the forum welcomed major international partners such as Portugal, Spain, Kazakhstan, France, and the 16 Central and Eastern European countries. Over 8,000 participants from 83 countries and regions visited the forum, along with 54 China delegations and 105 cities delegations, and more than 430 distinguished speakers from around the world representing some of the strongest players in the industry. GTEF creates partnerships and connects businesses offering a large trade and exhibition area for networking and business matching sessions around a well-rounded social program of cultural performances and exhibitions. Launched under the auspices of All China Federation of Industry and Commerce that assists China's government in managing the country's private economy and acts as a bridge between the private sector and the government with 4.7 million members and China Chamber of Tourism that unites private enterprises of the tourism industry in China to enhance exchange and cooperation with foreign tourism companies and counting approximately 5,000 members. GTEF is hosted by the Macau SAR government in collaboration with UNWTO and coordinated by the Global Tourism Economy Research Center and has been blessed with the continued support from world-renowned organizations such as WTTC, PATA, WTCF, and ETC. Since 2014, GTEF presents every year an annual research report jointly published by the UNWTO and the Global Tourism Economy Research Center, sharing Asia tourism intelligence with government bodies and tourism stakeholders alike. GTEF's contribution to the sustainable development of tourism has been recognized and lauded by public and private sector leaders all over the world, generating a whopping 41.7 million US dollars in media coverage worldwide with over 100 media publications in China alone. Macau, the host city of GTEF, takes pride in its geographic position as the southern gateway of China and Asia, and its forerunner position in the region's fast-growing tourism economy. Possessing a unique blend of 500 years of Sino-Portuguese heritage, with 630,000 inhabitants and more than 32 million visitors in 2017, Macau has made tremendous strides towards economic diversification enhancement of all aspects of its tourism economy, and becoming a world center of tourism and leisure. 2018 also marks the year of the much-expected release of the Greater Bay Area Development Plan, connecting 11 cities in the south of China. The current population of the Greater Bay Area is approximately 68 million people. By 2030, it is forecast to grow to 86 million, and the region should more than triple its GDP by then. GTEF is proud to present its featured Chinese partner, the Guangdong Province, richest province of China per GDP, and also China's number one outbound tourism market. Forming the very heart of the Greater Bay Area, Guangdong Province will drive growth in the region and for the rest of the world, notably through numerous massive connectivity projects, notably airports and railway systems, in addition to the already renowned world's largest bridge connecting Hong Kong, Macau, Zhuhai. The beauty of the province's natural landscapes, combined to an exceptional cultural heritage, drive a booming tourism industry with over 360 million travelers recorded in 2016. In 2019, the GTEF will be welcoming Argentina and Brazil as its international destination partner, continuing the forum's mission of building partnerships and connecting the world to China and China to the world. Join us in Macau for the Global Tourism Economy Forum October 23rd to 24th, 2018.
The success of events such as that in Macau is based largely on your preparation. You will receive your login to the appointment matching system. This tool allows you to select and rank the Chinese operators with whom you'd like to meet at the matchmaking. You will have until the 10th of October to complete these selections, upon which time the system will close and the matchmaking process will begin. Remember, you are making your selections as are your counterparts. Both sets of preferences are taken into account. Ahead of the matchmaking, you will receive your preliminary appointments, which will allow you to prepare for your meetings. There may be some slight changes before the day of the event when you will receive a final printed version of your schedule uh, at the event registration upon registration. From our experience, the best advice we can provide to you are be open and receptive during meetings, even when areas of mutual interest might not be immediately apparent. Make the most of your 14 minute slot to explore possibilities. Remember that your appointments are based on your preferences as well as those of your counterparts. For the Chinese market, the buyers from China are looking for new product directly from the suppliers. Show them what you can offer to make their tours different from their competition. Don't worry about the language barrier for the buyers that require them. Uh, they will either speak English or they'll have been provided with an interpreter for their meetings. A Chinese version of your company description has been prepared in the event directory and uh, will be provided in individual bilingual copies for use as a basis of your conversations. To make it easier and to put a bit of context into your um, uh, approach to the event, uh, we've got a testimony from Jim Tare from Amber Tours. She has attended similar events in the past. So we're just going to watch a quick testimony from her side um, to give you a bit of advice on how to approach it if you've not done a similar event before. Okay, welcome. Um, if you could please tell me a little bit about yourself and your company. Hello, uh, my name is Jim Tare. I'm representing my own company, Amber Tours. Uh, this is a destination management company based in Vilnius. And we are offering uh, organized tourism services in uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Poland, Finland, uh, also the Russia, we are our partner company. Um, we are uh, very uh, strong in uh, destination. We have uh, Quite deep knowledge of uh, different fields in terms of history, nature, uh, theme, uh, tours, uh, and uh, well, uh, very uh, up to date programs um, that can be relevant to different type of uh, uh, tours. Uh, our um, uh, employees, they speak uh, eight different languages, uh, including uh, Chinese. Uh, so we are proud of that, of course, and we are able to talk with the, our clients in their own language, which is, of course, very important. Right. Uh, so uh, we are working with the um, tour operators and uh, um, night planners, uh, incentive houses, uh, agencies all over the world, um, I would say more than 25 countries. And uh, this year we are uh, celebrating our 10th anniversary. So you've attended uh, the B2B networking events such as the one that's coming up. Uh, when you registered for the event and then had access to the appointment system, how did you approach that in terms of selecting the buyers and profiling who is the right match with you? Um, the connections with China I have since 2011, so I already had uh, some insights about the uh, biggest tour operators and um, well other uh, DMCs based in China. Uh, I already made uh, my selections and I knew my target market uh, by that time when I already started to look through the list, so it was not that difficult. Of course, there are so many different uh, names and they are changing a lot, those companies are closing and they are coming uh, back. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, it was not um, also an uh, easy job, I would say. Um, I had already the, my homework done a, bit, a little bit before that. So it's about knowing about the market as well and how you're wanting to take your uh, product to, to the Chinese market, be it for groups, independent travellers, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, of course. So. Okay.
Great. And then on the day of the event itself, once you have your appointments, what do you, how do you approach the day itself in terms of the face-to-face -face meetings? You only have 12 or 14 minutes, so it's a very quick time to make the connection. Yeah, uh, as I said in uh, this business um, for 10 years, that we, at least in my company, and then for more years, uh, than two years in another. So I uh, have quite uh, an experience with the um, meetings and making it uh, um, possible with few minutes to present the company, to express uh, our strength and to uh, push the question how the cooperation can be possible between me and the, the company in front of me. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much. European tourism businesses attending partnerships in European tourism Macau represent products from across EU member states and neighbourhood countries. The business types coming to Macau uh, represent a varied spread which is well matched to the requirements and expectations of the Chinese buyers attending and within the thematic approach linked to tailor-made travel. Suppliers representing product offers suitable for FIT clients and groups uh, looking for bespoke services. Reflecting this thematic approach, the majority of the European operators attending Macau come from the following segments. Tourism businesses and services, tourist attractions, ground handlers, local tour operators and DMCs, hotel accommodation services. Uh, remaining attendees represent businesses such as restaurant and folklore shows, museum heritage and cultural demonstrations, transnational tourism product and European cultural route projects, uh, and cruise and rail excursions, and finally retail. A full list of businesses coming to Macau can be found via eutravelpartnerships.org. Partnerships in European tourism is not only focused on links between Europeans and Chinese operators, but also supporting intra-European cooperation and partnerships. Macau will give you an opportunity to meet and make co connections with colleagues in the European tourism industry, routes, networks, regional and transnational groups are represented in a number of ways. These may be of interest to you and your business. Suppliers coming to Macau are members of existing transnational groups and organisation as diverse as the Great Wine Capitals, Trans Europe Marinas, uh, Eurofund Group, the European Health Tourism Industry and uh, Napoleon for Younger Chinese Visiting Europe, NYCE. Among your number are inbound operators, ground handlers, DMCs and wholesalers whose business model is based on uh, cooperation, commissions and consolidating multi-destination offers. Make sure to make the most of your mutual networking, of the mutual networking opportunities during your visit to China. Check out the resources in the Partnerships in European Tourism uh, website uh, to discover how to reach out and form partnerships with uh, your European colleagues. We've provided a template in order to help you start uh, formalise any arrangements you'll make with uh, your European colleagues. Hello, I'm Elisa. I'm the China, China Market Specialist at ETOA. I will now go through the perspective of the Chinese buyers who will attend the events in Macau. Along with the organizer of GTEF, we have invited Chinese buyers representing the market of Southern China and the Great Bay Area. Uh, regions represented are Macau, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Zhuhai, uh, Guangzhou, and the major business area of mainland China. Operators attending Macau represent outbound business to Europe from a small scale of only a few hundred clients, upwards in excess of a million people per year. Operator types span FIT, group, mice, and a wholesale. In line with the theme in Macau, operators provide tailor-made tours and services, including experimental, food and wine, sports, culture, romantic, wedding, and even medical tourism. The operators are interested in independent attractions, businesses, and the properties, as well inbound wholesalers such as D 
DMCs and destination representatives. In addition to the key target European destinations, popular with first-time visitors, the operators are also interested in new and lesser-known destinations. Now, I would like to hand over to Mr. Bruce Ma, G2 Travel China. He is the general manager uh, based in China. And before, as a wholesaler tour operator, they will provide an outline of their company requirements and provide advice on how best to engage with similar companies to make the most of, of such events. My first question okay. is, uh, can you please tell me a little bit about your company? That's the first question. Okay. Okay, it's my honor to talk with you about our ETOA and our company. I will uh, give you a brief introduction of our G2 Travel company. Okay. Uh, G2 Travel is a dynamic hotel co-operator specializing in group-only land operations for the business-to-business -business travel industry. Our core business is supplying good group land services worldwide to travel trade in Asia, Europe, mm -hmm. the Mid East, and the Americas. Mm -hmm. We have direct contracts with suppliers across the UK, mm -hmm. the continental Europe, mm -hmm. and uh, Scandinavia, mm -hmm. and strong partnership for the non-Europe bound business to destinations including South America, USA, the Middle East, Russia, and Asia. Focus solely on group business, we are dedicated to providing excellent service with innovation, flexibility, and a personal touch, and building lasting and valuable partnerships. Uh, Mm -hmm. In last year, we mm -hmm. sent uh, only in China market. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two uh, business uh, offices, sales offices. Uh, we sent uh, over 100,000 clients from China mainland to Europe. Wow, that's a big, big number yes. for uh, for yes. European inbound tourism. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a very, very positive number which G2 offered. To contribute Thank to <laughs> e to EU <laughs> tourism industry, really, really positive. I'm so glad. And the second question yeah. I would like to know: What do you consider when going to make your appointment selections? Uh, <clears throat> I have uh, attended uh, mm -hmm. two meetings. Yes. Uh, uh, by ETOA. Yes. Uh, one is in uh, last November in London, and second is in this March in Berlin. Yes. Uh, when I uh, received your email mm -hmm. to introduce uh, all kinds of suppliers from yes. different destinations and different countries, uh, mm -hmm. I will uh, very carefully to check one by one. Uh, the most uh, prop proper uh, suppliers uh, or uh, partner uh, with G2 because uh, the time limit and the mm -hmm. opportunity is very good for us. Mm -hmm. I need to uh, select uh, uh, most prop uh, proper uh, partner yes. uh, in in this you meeting. So. Mm -hmm. uh, um, because our business uh, is mainly in Europe, yes. Uh, I will. Uh, we we are most interesting to meet with uh, Europe um, re uh, tourism bureaus, tourism representative, and ho hotels, uh, coach companies, mm. uh, crews uh, like this. Mm, okay, as I yeah. as I stand from your side, you are mainly focused on European tourism boards, not like national tourism board we call it, and hotels, local mm -hmm. hotel, European hotels, coach companies, yeah, yeah. all these suppliers. Yeah. You are really focused on this because you want to uh, take advantage of our events either in Berlin and in London. That's your yeah, exactly. uh, priority. Mm -hmm. 
to cons take into yeah. consideration. So the next question is, what type of companies are you looking for? Actually, you already answered the questions. When the second mm -hmm. question, and you already answer it. So it's very um, obvious that you're looking for these um, local suppliers, uh, hotels, tourism mm -hmm. boards, mm -hmm. coach companies. Let me yeah. repeat it again. <laughs> well, after yeah. I heard yeah, from you. <laughs> <laughs> and the last yeah. question, the last question, mm -hmm. and we are very interested to mm -hmm. know is, how do you make the most of your meetings at B2B events, either in Berlin and in London? The last time. How do yes. you? Uh, the, the, uh, the event is uh, quite valuable and, uh, uh, and uh, very important for us because uh, not only in the events we met with uh, uh, different uh, friends, get familiar with them and uh, talk about the uh, mm -hmm. most new updated uh, tr tourism trend and yes. uh, uh, China market mm -hmm. character to, to the local European uh, people. But also, uh, we uh, we have kept in touch with some uh, friends and partners uh, after I came back to China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, you know, uh, in recently, uh, more and more uh, European uh, tourism partner yeah. visit our office, visit China uh, more frequently. Mm. So uh, I think uh, ETOA supply uh, supply us a very good opportunity to make us more uh, familiar and uh, most uh, get in touch frequently. It's very good. Mm. I think this is our mm -hmm. uh, main target, main, main mission mm -hmm. to bring more and more European supplies to to our Chinese tour operators. You guys can face mm -hmm. them. You you guys can meet them face to face, and also share yeah. the Chinese tourists their habits, mm -hmm. their preference to uh, these. Yeah? Yes, and also you know uh, the. Some of them uh, came to China to visit uh, Chinese uh, tourism uh, agency partners yeah. like us, yeah. uh, agency, mm -hmm. and give agency a very detailed uh, presentation. Mm. You That's mean very, the, use, uh, very yes, useful, uh, right? Like roadshow. Yeah, useful to yes, roadshow to to the whole team of agency. And, uh, mm -hmm. Many colleagues can. Uh, talk with them and uh, communication with them. I see. It's mm. it, it sounds like, for example, at least European suppliers they design a specific itineraries or programs specially for yeah. Chinese yeah. tourists. Yeah, exactly. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. I'm very happy to That's know that. <laughs> I'm very happy to mm -hmm. hear that. Um, <laughs> which our yeah. events can bring more and more, uh, you know, itinerary, more and more products to your to yeah. the Chinese tour operators, mm -hmm. especially the tour operators yeah. like you, your company. I'm mm -hmm. very, I'm so glad mm -hmm. to hear that. Actually, that's all. Yeah. That's all for our conversation, the dialogue. Actually, and really, uh, really. Yeah. Um, appreciate your time once again and your contribution to our um eu china tourism year this this year i know i will go, i gonna mm -hmm. see you again i know i gonna see you again mm. <laughs> in china yeah, me too. My <laughs> thank you so thank much you. bruce so that's um the main part of the webinar complete and i hope you found that really useful ahead of your, your time in china um now to the q a part uh, you'll see there's a question function on the webinar program. So if you have any questions you'd like to pose, now is the time. Um, before we do that, Javier has asked, already posed a question, um, which is quite interesting. He was asking about whether he's made his selections already, but he actually wants to meet more than is on his list. So he's made 11 requests. Uh, but do remember that you, that doesn't mean you're going to have 11 meetings. Your counterparts are already making up their choices as well. So they will be built on top of those and in combination will create your full schedule. So you may not have 100% of your slots filled, but there'll be definitely a very good proportion of them. Um, and hopefully that in combination with 
your requests and their requests will be the people that you want to see. The way that it works at the workshop is that the buyers are seated. So if you have not been given a match with um, somebody that you'd really like to, although we do um, prioritize from the top, um, your first choice is the number one choice. Uh, thereafter, um, uh, they'll be at the desk. So we'll provide a, a seating plan for you to, so you can know where the buyers are seated if you want to go and talk with them. If you've already submitted your um, request, then the I would advise you to go back before Wednesday because even on Friday, Elisa added um, another set of buyers that have just come through from our partners at GTEF. We've been working in cooperation with uh, the show, so there are actually more buyers on there. If you didn't do, if you did your appointment request before, then there may be actually different buyers on there that you might want to um, go through and have a look. Um, with regard to accommodation, we'll be sending out the um, rooming confirmations very shortly. That's just being processed on by the office in Hong Kong at the moment. So I know some of you are keen to have the uh, confirmation number. So bear with us, that'll be with you soon. Um, you should already have your flights booked and I'd recommend that you book in advance your ferry. If you're flying into Hong Kong, uh, book in advance your ferry transfer over to Macau. It makes it a lot easier. Once you arrive, um, in Macau, all of the hotels provide free transfer buses. So just keep an eye out for the Sheraton Grand because they have their own free bus. Mm -hmm. OK, so Dimitri has sent a question. Will translators be available during the ma matchmaking appointments? Yes. So all of the um, buyers, we've asked them to require. Most of them have quite good English. Yes. But uh, those who uh, said no will either be provided with uh, an interpreter for the day. And I think. Um, also, the hosts are providing electronic virtual interpreters yes, as well. So uh, we will ensure that all the meetings go smoothly based on uh, interpreting requirements. So, Dimitri, I hope that covers your question. Does anybody else have any other points that they'd like to bring up? If not, we've got um, some other research presentation uh, that I'll leave you with, which will give you some background information to the Chinese market so perhaps get your thought process going before you depart. Um, if not, my, um, our colleague Karine, as you probably interacted with her already, she's available via email for um, any further questions. But if not, it'll be myself and Elisa who will see you in Macau in two weeks. So I'm just waiting a few moments in case there are any more questions. Oh, just in time. Would it still be possible to have contact details of the buyers that we did not have to the ability to connect with? Definitely, there's a printed directory that we're preparing that has all of your information, including your English and Chinese, um, co uh, your contact details and the, the translation of your business profiles. And in that same directory is the full list of all the buyers that have got there just in time for the print yes. run. Um, but we're working on that right now. Okay. And if that's it, as I said, um, this will be available for a download. It will be sent to you automatically probably tomorrow morning. Uh, so if you want to review it again on your way over to China, if not, we're available on email for any further questions. So I will just leave you with uh, a presentation that was put together for the China market webinar provided under the Partnerships in European Tourism. And that goes through the state of play in the Chinese market at the moment. So have a safe trip to China and we'll see you there. Yeah, we'll see you in Macau. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and good evening um, to everyone who is joining from China. My name is Thomas Larsson. I am the general manager of the China office of Kairos Future, which is an international insight and foresight company and I've been living in China on and off since 2002. I will present some uh, brief insights from a snapshot reports on the Chinese travel market that we have put together on behalf of the um, European Travel Commission based on secondary research. An important driver uh, behind the growth in Alpine travel uh, in, in China is the growing spending power among Chinese consumers which is mainly a result of rising income levels. The average income in China grew by about 50% between 2011 and 2016. And during the same period, the Yuan also strengthened the Chinese currency by 23% against the Euro, which further strengthened the spending power for Chinese travelers to Europe. 
more recently, the currency has uh, be begun to uh, get a bit weaker again against the euro. But still, since um, 2011, it's up um, about 15%. So still much stronger than it was five, six years ago. On top of these trends, Chinese consumers are also spending a larger share of their disposable income on experience consumption, including tourism. What's happening right now, um, with, with some implications for tourism, is that people are spending more on immersive rather than observatory experiences. Things like participatory theater, which has become a big thing here in Shanghai. And when traveling to Europe, they want to not only see the street culture, for example, they want to become part of uh, the European cafe culture or whatever it might be. The average traveler to Europe, Europe has an income about six times as high as that of the average Chinese consumer, which means that the income distribution is um, more important than the average income when you try to make forecasts about travel to Europe. As you can see here in the top right chart, the income distribution curve is actually an overlay of two separate bell curves, one of them um, uh, representing rural consumers and the other one representing urban consumers. And what's expected to happen in the next 10 years is that the sharp part of this uh, urban income uh, curve and the peak of the curve will pass the point where travel to Europe becomes feasible. So this will lead to, to a sharp uh, growth in the number of Chinese travelers to Europe, according to a study by Goldman Sachs, a doubling by 2025. The bottom right map shows the geographical distribution of income with rich coastal regions and poorer inland areas. What's hidden in this map, but very important, is that there are wealthy inland cities, for example, Chengdu in Sichuan province, which have a strong tourism demand as well. In an international perspective, the size of the Chinese travel market has um, surpassed that of other markets. Here we see it um, through outbound tourism expenditure. The World Bank recently adjusted its numbers for 2010 to 2015, which makes the picture even more dramatic than what was previously known. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> China's spending is now twice as high as that of the US market, just two years after uh, overtaking the US market. So this has, has gone uh, really, really fast. The summer is the most popular season for, for travel, according to data from the Chinese Outbound, or sorry, the Ch uh, Chinese uh, Tourism Academy, despite relatively short paid leaves. Um, on a weekly basis the the peaks are around the Chinese New Year, New Year uh, in January February and the national day holiday in October but on a monthly level uh, the summer months are are the strongest uh, months again according to data from the Chinese Tourism Academy Europe is the destination for about 12% of the outbound trips and that's when excluding the trips to Hong Kong Macau and Taiwan most of the outbound trips are with family or friends. Only 6% of Chinese outbound travelers travel uh, alone. One striking thing about uh, Chinese travelers is that they are on average very young. Two thirds are born in the 1980s or 90s. And for online travel bookings, uh, this number is 80%. So 80% of the bookings online are made by people born in the 80s or, or later. This is according to Fliggy, one of the major online travel platforms. Per trip spending is uh, quite high considering the income levels that we saw on the previous slide. More than one-fifth of outbound travelers spend more than 2,500 uh, euros per person to per trip. And this includes short haul uh, trips as well. So even higher if we look at travel to Europe. Specific travel categories that have increased rapidly um, in the last year, these are year on year uh, numbers, include personalized trips, car rentals and local guides. So 
was I mean the, these numbers um, indicate that the the interest in independent and individual individualized travel has probably grown faster than the comfort level in planning such trips. So travelers need help uh, with with the trip planning and finding uh, local guides. It also shows that Chinese are attracted to the freedom of being able to drive at the destination easily, being able to, to get around. A few things to highlight about the regulatory environment and the government's involvement in the travel trade in China. The outbound travel market in China is uh, highly regulated. For example, foreign-owned travel agencies need to sell to Chinese consumers either through online channels from overseas or through Chinese partners. In a few cases, um, that could be a, a joint venture partner, but usually through intermediaries. There are several initiatives in the current five-year plan to promote domestic tourism, including the establishment of leisure belts around major Chinese cities. But some of these measures also spill over into uh, the outbound travel market. For example, <clears throat> more than 2006, or sorry, 260 new airports are to be constructed until 2020. And many of these airports are, are international, so increasing the access to the international market or to international destinations. The five-year plan also seeks to strengthen tourism cooperation with countries along the so-called Belt and Road, which is a signature initiative of the current Chinese leadership to promote trade, development and cooperation between China and more than 60 countries, mostly in Asia, uh, but also in, um, in Eastern Europe. So, for example, a visa-free arrangement has been implemented for Chinese tourists to Serbia, and um, that happened uh, very recently this year. And similar discussions are ongoing with several other European countries. There have been several measures to shift travel away from the, the national holidays, um, previously through um, more paid leave days, but more recently to promote the enforcement of the paid leave system, because a problem has been that a lot of people are not using their, their um, uh, paid leave. A few changes to highlight with regards to the Chinese uh, travel trade. As elsewhere, there has been a strong shift towards the online part of, of the travel trade in China. Um, which is usually divided into the OTAs, the online travel agencies, and then the user-generated content uh, platforms with reviews and, and so on. But in China, this distinction is becoming more and more blurred because everyone is moving towards becoming um, OTAs, also the, the meta search um, engines. So the landscape is starting to look quite messy with a lot of different um, actors coming from different uh, directions but trying to, to do um, uh, kind of the same thing. But behind the scenes, it's, it's actually quite... Um, um, I mean, mo most of these platforms are controlled by, by a very small number of internet powerhouses. A few international uh, platforms are present either under their own brands in China or through, through collaboration with Chinese OTAs. But in general, the Chinese OTAs need to be part of the equation when, when targeting Chinese travelers, unless perhaps you're looking for the people that, um, that consciously try to avoid other Chinese tourists during their trips. They like to use um, non-Chinese OTAs. Overall, China um, Chinese OTAs have a stronger offline components than many Western OTAs. Um, with strong phone support and even physical help centers in some popular destinations. They're also branching out in all kinds of directions, Chunar and Ctrip, two of the ma major uh, OTAs, um, have or are going into aviation and cruises um, and trying to build an ecosystem of services around Chinese tourists. Despite the growth of the online travel ecosystem, we should not forget that a large share of bookings are still done through traditional agencies. 
<clears throat> this number here is a few years old, 80% of bookings, but even if it has gone down slightly, the majority of trips are, are, are booked in this way. So, um, and this is a, a landscape that is quite fragmented, around 4,000 uh, companies in, in this space. Some of them quite innovative, uh, providing things like VR experiences for um, prospective travelers so that you can see and experience what a trip will, will be like before making the purchase decision. I won't go into all of the recommendations in uh, details, but just a few highlights. Key obstacles include the difficulty of getting sufficient buy-in from the Chinese partner, which requires a long-term perspective and a lot of patience. These are advice coming from, um, from uh, European uh, tour um, operators and tourism product providers that have been working for a long time with the Chinese market. The um, dominant Chinese OTAs have a huge bargaining power and are known for applying a low-cost strategy. This might not be a problem if you have a business model with post-booking revenue stream, but um, otherwise it, it, it might be painful because it really cuts into the margins. The growing demand for personalized and specialized travel experiences offers some, some opportunities on the product side. There are many growing niche markets and a growing interest in themed travel, for example, sports and outdoor uh, adventures. The build-up for the Beijing Winter Olympics to, uh, 2022 will provide some opportunities for promoting winter sports um, destinations and, and products. Individual travel is still outside the comfort zone uh, of, of many Chinese travelers, uh, even if they want to, to travel independently. So this provides opportunities to help them create tailored plans in the booking stage and also to help them get immersed and exposed to the right experiences at the destination. Authenticity does not include, for Chinese travelers, to give up uh, the conveniences from home and one of the most important conveniences is to be plugged into their social media channels which means they need access to wi-fi marketing can be done on uh, different levels even with a small budget you can make sure that your website works well in china um, and that it can be found through chinese search engines and perhaps um, getting a profile on on baidu um, Usually this takes more than just translating the website into Chinese. You need to make sure that the loading times are fast and that it works through uh, mobile um, devices because Chinese um, uh, use, use uh, mobile devices a lot. But it's worth remembering that 20% or so of Chinese outbound travelers prefer to book directly through the product uh, providers' websites. And, and in some uh, categories that number is even higher so um, it's it's worth uh, investing in this you can also market through chinese people living at your destination you don't have to find the expensive key opinion leaders in china there is usually someone with more followers than the entire population of the city that they live in in europe um, but but with a lot of followers back in china also make it attractive for Chinese visitors to take photos and to share them in their social networks. Um, so to take photos while they're traveling. Um, there's also increasing, new, uh, increasing use of new technologies like uh, small selfie drones that you can bring in your luggage and 360, uh, 360 degrees um, degree cameras that um, so you can you can take photos in all directions and you can upload that then to your your microblog for example in terms of cooperation work with otas for targeting consumers on a large scale and team up with smaller agencies for niche products and audiences so with that i um, i um, say thank you very much